Stuka Joe here. We're about to start the 1850 turn, the third of six turns in this playthrough of the great game. And we've seen how the British have conquered the neighboring vassal states of Punjab, Baluchistan, and Afghanistan, and even Herat. And they are venturing with forces into Bokhara. And Bokhara is one of those uh, vassal states with no standing armies, but they have the Emir of Bokhara, who appears to be uh, an able military leader. The Russians have been able to sway the Turkomans to their camp, as well as the Persians, but the Persian army is at less than half of its original strength. It is currently at eight of its original 20 strength points. The Russians only have one officer on the map, but they will be receiving three this turn, but they're nothing to write home about. So much of the hopes of the Russians uh, are tied to obtaining rebellion cards that can raise havoc on those vassal states that the British just rolled over in the last two turns. So now we move on to the 1850 turn. The Russians received three officers, Ignatiev, Kanikov, and Duamel. And you can see they have the lowest of ratings on both categories, tactics and diplomacy. Ignatiev is placed in Karg Island. Kanikov goes to Kazala, where the Russians already have five strength points. And Duamel is assigned to Merv in Turkomans. Russian strategy here is to shore up the lines, uh, the deserts in Persia, the Emir of Bokhara, and the hidden route over the Pamirs will buy some time to bring the remaining neutrals on board. And for this decade, the Russians have more officers than the British. And the advantage in officers over the British will make less likely for the British to be playing spoiler cards. That means that the Russians will probably be more successful uh, through diplomatic means in uh, bringing more vassal states to their side. The British have two spaces under their control in Persia, so they're looking forward to drawing the Persian Persuasion card, which could bring Persia uh, out of the British have control of two Persian spaces, so they're looking forward to drawing the Persian Persuasion card and taking Persia out of the Russian camp and reverting it back to neutral. But of course they have to draw that card first. So we shuffle the deck and draw seven cards for each of the sides. The British draw a campaign card, Emir's Daughter, which is uh, used to counter the flashman officer so that's a card the russians would like to have and the british probably will discard rebellion uh, the russians don't have any vassal states under their control that uh, may rebel hero the persian persuasion card this is a card that the british would like to play as soon as possible shooting leave not very useful for the british when you have a shortage of officers on the map and an emissary. Same thing happens here. Yes, it's good to bring uh, vassal states to your camp through diplomatic means, but you need to have the officers to be able to send over, and the Brits don't have many of those in this turn. So the British will get rid of the Emir's Daughter card, and also of the Shooting Leave card. And the British draw two cards, Pundits, which is a very important card to enter Kashgaria. And the second draw is another emissary card. Let's take a look at the Russian hand. Campaign card, gunboat diplomacy, Persian persuasion, which is useless for the Russians at this time. 
pen mightier than sword, two emissary cards, and one spoiler. So the Russians will discard the Persian persuasion card, and they figure that these British will be reinforcing this turn since they don't have um, many leaders around. So uh, they'll also get rid of the pen mightier than sword card. And they draw two cards from the deck. And they draw Rebellion and Gunboat Diplomacy. So now they have two Gunboat Diplomacy cards. And this is excellent for the Russians. They can now move some forces into Orenburg. And then with the two Gunboats, this will make the path to Kiva a possibility. And notice that Kiva with two spaces cannot be subject of an emissary card play. So now we proceed to round one. Each side selects a card and both sides played a campaign card so we roll 1d6. Odd result, Russians will go first. Even result, it'll be the British. The roll is a three so the Russians will play their card first. So the only decision to make here is whether to play the card for action, in which case it would be four actions, or play it for four strength points of reinforcements. And the Russians will play it for reinforcements. And the Russians receive four strength points at their base in Orenburg. Now the British play their campaign card, and they have the same two choices. And they also play the card for reinforcement, so they receive four strength points at their base in Delhi. And we move now to round two. Each side selects a card. The Russians play Gunboat Diplomacy and the British a hero card. And remember the caveat that the hero card in this game has a value of three since uh, this game was played using a prior version of the rules. This is a game with a script, so we're going to follow the script. So we have to roll a die to see who actually has the initiative. The roll is a five, an odd number, so the Russians have the initiative and they'll play their card first. And the Russians will play Gunboat Diplomacy for action. So they have three actions and they can move, as the card states there, over the blue lines in the Aral and Caspian Seas during this round. The first action is used to march the four Russian strength points at Orenburg through desert terrain into Kazala. The desert attrition roll is 11 modified to a 10, so all four are safe from that type of attrition. And now we roll an additional attrition die roll and add two. A seven modified to a nine, and the four strength points are safe once again. We'll sail down the... We'll sail across the Aral Sea. And we'll reach Kiva. This, of course, constitutes an invasion, and now we have combat against the fortress there. The Russians roll one die, and the Kievans three, and the Russians roll first. The roll is a one modified to a zero because of Kanikov's uh, tactics rating. So the Russians inflict nine strength points in losses to the Kievan fortress. Kievans with six strength points left roll three dice and they roll 15 and inflict no losses on the Russians. The Russians however are not able to reduce the fortress of Kiva so they have to withdraw and they withdraw across the Aral Sea once again into Kazala. The attrition die roll is a 10 modified to a 12 so they lose no strength points. And the last action is used to march Ignatiev and his small Russo-Persian force through desert terrain to Isfahan to prevent the uh, British from uh, 
trying to take Tehran through the back door. And now the Russians have to roll for desert attrition. Seven modified to a six, no losses. And now regular attrition. Eight modified to a ten, and no losses either. And now we go to the British second round. The British play their hero card, and they play it for reinforcement. So they will receive three strength points of reinforcements. So the British receive three strength points, which are added to the ones already in Delhi. Now they have seven there. Now on to round three. Each of the sides selects a card. The Russians select gunboat diplomacy. The British pundits, so the British have the initiative and will play their card first. And the British will play first the event of the card in order to complete one half of the requirements to be able to enter into Kashgaria. And the card is placed in its corresponding space in the panel. Now the British play the card for its two actions. The column in Delhi moves to Lahore. And for the second action, all strength points except one march to Peshawar. Now we must roll for attrition. The lone strength point, of course, will not be affected. The roll is a six modified to an eight, and all six strength points are safe. And that concludes the British third round. The Russians play gunboat diplomacy for action and of course they can move strength points across the blue connection lines in the Aral and Caspian Seas. The Russians will move Kanikov and eight of the nine strength points in Kasala across the Aral Sea to attack Kiva once again. So the Russians have eight strength points and they roll 1d6. The roll is a 3 modified to a 2 because of Kanikov's tactics rating. 8 minus 2 is 6, exactly what the Russians needed to destroy the fortress at Kiva. Kiva is conquered and we see control and discontent markers placed there. And now for the second action, Kanikov will march to Petro Alexandrovsk and now he'll finish his uh, round there and we roll for attrition. The roll is an 8 modified to a 10 and no strength points are lost. And the Russians have one more action. The Russians will march the strength point left at Kasala to Turkestan. And the Russians have been very fortunate in taking Kiva after crossing the desert, in this case, uh, that was thanks to the gunboat diplomacy cards. They didn't have to. No. So the Russians have taken Kiva with practically no losses, and they're about to intervene in Bokara. Now we move on to round four. Each of the sides selects a card. The Russians play Emissary and the British Rebellion, and the Russians will play their card first. The Russians play the Emissary card first for its text or event. And the Russians send their officer, Duhamel, who is currently in Merv, to Bokara to try to convince the Emir to join the Russian camp. British don't have a spoiler card to play, so the Russians roll 1d6, they need a 5 or more, and they add Duhamel's diplomacy score of 1. The roll is a 2 modified to a 3, so the diplomatic attempt to bring uh, Bokara into the Russian camp fails. Now the Russians play the action, sole action of the emissary card. And the Russians will march six of the eight strength points they have in Petro Alexandrovsk under Kanikov across the Kiliskum desert 
to attack the fortress of Tashkent. We first roll for the desert. Attrition, 8, minus 1, 7, but Kanikov has 6 strength points, so they're all safe for now. The Russian forces roll first 1d6, and then whatever survives of the Tashkent fortress will roll or fire back. The roll is a 5 modified to a 4 because of Kanikov's uh, tactics rating. So 6 minus 4 inflicts only 2 damage points on the Tashkent fortress. Now the fortress fires back. It has 8 strength points and rolls 3 dice. The roll is a 6, so it inflicts 2 strength point losses on the Russian force. And Kanikov's force has been reduced to 4 strength points, and it has to withdraw across the desert once again to Petro Alexandrovsk. The desert attrition roll is a 9 minus 1, 8, no losses on the force for that type of attrition. And because uh, Kanikov's force is composed of two strength points, we won't even roll for the regular attrition because it's impossible to get a lower result than two. So round four didn't go too well for the Russians. And now in the script, the playthrough, the Russians target Turkomans as a uh, the vassal state that will suffer the, uh, or there were, that will undergo the rebellion now. Now, a word about uh, the play of this rebellion card. In the walkthrough by Richard Hecker, which is what I'm using as a script, what happens now is that the British target tour commands for the rebellion. And the problem is that you can only target vassal states that were conquered militarily, and Turkomans came aboard the Russian camp through diplomatic means, through the play of an emissary card. So I basically have two options. Uh, Richard recognizes that uh, in the uh, walkthrough, but he goes forward anyway with the uh, rebellion in Turkomans. What I will do is, uh, the Russians could have suffered a rebellion in one of the places that they actually conquered, which is Kiva. So we will attempt the rebellion die roll instead of Turkomans at Kiva. And we roll 1d6. And on a three or more, there will be a rebellion. But the roll is a two, so no rebellion occurs. And uh, what you just saw was a modification because of a mistake, which proves my point that mistakes are part of wargaming. Uh, so let's continue with the playthrough. Now the British play the rebellion card for the actions. Three actions. And the British will move the six strength points they have in Peshawar to Kabul and from there they will march to Termes in Bokhara to join Flashman's force. And now the British have 12 strength points there. The attrition die roll is a 6 modified to an 8, so no losses are suffered in this march. The British have one more action, and they decide to stay put for now and pass. Now we move to the last round of this turn, round five. Each of the sides selects one card, and both played the emissary card, and we have to roll one d6 to see who actually goes first. The Russians will go first on an odd result, and the Brits first on an even result. The result is a four. The British will play their card first. And the British will play the emissary card first for the event. The British want to give diplomacy an opportunity to uh, bring Bokhara to their side. So Abbott, who is currently in Bampur, Persia, is transferred to Bokhara, try to sway the Emir 
to come to the British camp. And Abbott has a paltry diplomacy rating of one, and the British need five or more. Do the Russians have a spoiler? And if they do, do they want to play it now? And the Russians do have a spoiler, and they also have, uh, as we stated at the beginning of this turn, a marked advantage in the number of officers present on the board. And the Russians will send Duhamel, who's already there at Bokhara, to be their spoiler. So now we roll 1d6 for the British. We add 1 for Abbott's diplomacy rating and subtract 1 for Duhamel, so there's no net effect. And the British need 5 or more. And the roll is a 5, so Abbott convinces the Emir to side with the British and Duhamel is eliminated. And Bokhara joins the British camp. And the British now play the emissary card for its sole action. And Flashman, currently with uh, 12 strength points at Termes, Bokhara, will leave three there and will march nine to the capital of Bokhara. He rolls for attrition, six plus two, eight, but he has nine strength points. So the British have to lose one strength point and will break down that three strength point counter. And now the British have eight strength points at Bokhara. Now it's the Russians' turn to play their emissary card and they will play it first for the event. And wanting to revert the situation in Bokhara, where the Emir has uh, joined the British camp. The Russians send Ignatiev, currently at Isfahan, Persia, to Bokhara as their emissary and will try to sway the Emir to revert to neutral status. The Russians roll 1d6 and they add Ignatiev's diplomacy rating of one. They need five or more. The British don't have a spoiler to counter this die roll. The die roll is a five modified to a six and Bokhara reverts to neutrality. So we eliminate the British control markers. And because the British have strength points in a space where Bokhara also has strength points Immediately, we have a combat situation between the British and the Bokadians. The British have eight strength points under Flashman, and they roll one die. The Bokadians roll three dice. The British roll a one modified to a minus one. So it's eight minus minus one, which is the same as saying eight plus one nine damage points on the fortress of Bokhara. And now the Bokharians roll, they roll three dice and we subtract two for the Emir's tactics rating. The Bokharians roll a five modified to a three. The strength of the fortress is six minus three. Three strength points are lost by the British. And with the loss of three strength points the British force is now composed of five strength points and it must retreat back to Termes. Now the Russians play the emissary card for its sole action. The Russians see an opportunity here and march Kanikov's force of seven strength points to Bokhara across the desert. Now we roll for attrition. The roll is a 9 minus 1 for the desert is 8 and Kanikov has 7 strength points so there's no loss in this desert march. And now the Russians attack the fortress. Fortress has 6 strength points left. The Russians fire first with 1 die roll. The roll is a 2 reduced to a 1 because of Kanikov's tactics rating. 7 strength points minus 1 which is a die roll. 6 Strength points lost by the fortress. The fortress is destroyed. And Bokhara is conquered by the Russians. And the Emir is eliminated. 
That's the end of Russian round five. Now we proceed to the end of the decade phase and let's see which officers stay and which go. All Russian officers rolled even die rolled so they stay for the next turn. Flashman on the other hand leaves for good. Abbott also remains for one more turn. This decade has seen a turn to good fortune for the Russians. Managed to conquer areas through uh, military might and also through diplomatic means. Despite the lower quality of its officers. Let's take a look at the victory points. Russia controls its three home spaces plus four in Turkomans plus two in Kiva, two in Bokhara, plus one in Turkestan. For 12 victory points, the British have four in the British Raj, four in Punjab, three in Baluchistan, three in Afghanistan, one for Herat, and one for Bokhara for a total of 16 victory points. So the Russians have managed to take advantage of the British weaknesses in officers, conduct successful diplomacy and military operations with its mediocre officers. And the game is now a close contest. So stay tuned for the 1860 turn, the fourth of six turns. This is the great game. And this is Tuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.